So today's about the definition of the derivative. And I'm also going to go a little bit into the history of calculus because I want you to understand the notation for derivatives. And one of the reasons why the notation for derivatives is complicated is because the history of calculus is complicated. And then you're also going to write an equation for a tangent line to a curve at a given point. So first of all, the definition of a derivative, it tells you the instantaneous rate of change of a function for any x-coordinate. It's a, the derivative itself is a function. So if I tell you x, you can tell me the slope of f. The derivative, the input is the x-coordinate, the same x-coordinate that you use for f, and the output is the slope of f. For linear functions, derivatives are boring, but now that we're looking at curves and thinking about the slope of those, um, we have you know, a more interesting derivative because the, the slope changes depending on what, my, what x coordinate I'm at. Um, here are two different ways of looking at the derivative equation. One way of looking at that equation is saying, well, if I take an x coordinate a, like in this case, my x coordinate looks like it's one, if I take that x-coordinate 1 and I move just a little tiny bit away from that x-coordinate, and I'm going to call that tiny little bit h, then as I do the slope formula, my y-coordinate would be f of a, and my other y-coordinate would be f of a plus h. So I subtract my y-coordinates. My x-coordinates would be a and a plus h. If I subtract my x-coordinates, a plus h minus a, and I just get h. So that's the difference quotient for that example. Um, so that's one way of thinking about the derivative. The other way of thinking about the derivative is just saying, well, at first I'm just going to think about x and a as two different points. And I'm going to say here is x, and here's x comma f of x. Here is a, and here's f comma f of a, and now I'm going to use my limit to move those two points infinitely close together. Either way, my slope formula is still the difference of the y coordinates minus the difference of the x coordinates, and so it's, uh, sorry, over the difference of the x coordinates. So either way, it's still the same idea. It's just that, um, yeah, so I can just write with my finger. It's, it's just that, um, I'm thinking of it slightly differently. Either way, I get the slope formula and then I take the limit so that I get those points super close together. So once I have that slope formula, I might want to write the tangent line equation for that tangent line to a curve. In order to write a tangent line, I want you to get in your brain that every time you write an equation for a tangent line, you need three things. You need an x-coordinate, you need a y-coordinate, and you need a slope. If you have those three things, then you can write the equation for a tangent line. The x-coordinate is usually going to be given to you, so like here our x-coordinate is 1. The y-coordinate will be um, evaluating your function. You can get the y-coordinate by evaluating your function at for us, it's 1, so I'm going to plug that 1 into my function. And then the slope is going to be the derivative, because remember, the derivative um, tells you the slope of the function. So it would be, for us, oops, it would be the derivative at x equals 1. Um, point slope form of a line is super important in calculus because a lot of times those are just the three things we want. And um, the point slope form of a line is the easiest equation to write. Um, on the AP test, if they ask you for an equation for a line, any form of the line is cool. So here is an equation for a line, the, the slope, point slope form. So here's the history of calculus. Um, and I thought it was interesting as I was researching this that Newton was stuck at home avoiding the plague. He was stuck at home for a year. And while he was stuck at home, 
he calculated um, the, the instantaneous rate of change of a function. So he used that. Um, and we've all been stuck at home, and what we've been doing is making TikToks. So this is a TikTok from 2019. Actually, it's in Wuhan. This is a kind of a historical TikTok. I can't play it because um, it won't work on my video. So here's a picture of um, Newton and Leibniz statues at Oxford. Um, Calculus was actually invented at the same time by two guys. So Newton was stuck at home with the plague, and Leibniz um, was also a mathematician. Leibniz actually, it may not have been exactly the same moment, but roads were bad then, and communication wasn't as good, so it might not have been all at the same time. There's always been a dispute in the history of calculus about who did it, who was the first to invent it. But the important thing that you should know is that because there were two inventors, there was Newton and there was Leibniz, and they didn't work together. They both came up with the idea on their own, and it was just very slightly different time periods. Um, they both have their own notation. And a little bit like some people like Fig Newtons, some people like Leibniz crackers, a little bit like that, there are reasons why both notations are good. Newton's notation is. He actually, I mean, to be perfectly honest, he actually used a dot above for a notation for his um, derivative. It was um, Euler, actually, who used this tick mark, but almost nobody uses dots anymore. Um, so most people tend to like Newton's notation better um, because it's faster to write. But what I really like about Leibniz notation is dy is, you know, a little bit like delta y. It's the change in the y coordinates. And dx is a little bit like delta x. It's the change in the x coordinates. So Leibniz notation for derivative um, really draws on the fact that the derivative is the slope. Newton notation doesn't do that as much. It's harder to see what the independent variable is with Newton's notation, or what slope you're, what the slope is with Newton's notation. But it's kind of like the cookies. Pick which one you like better. You can use either one. There are times when I'll use Leibniz notation for clarity, and there'll be times when I use Newton's notation. So here's an example we're going to do together. Um, I got to change my color. There we go. Um, we're going to do, we're going to use this definition of limit, and we're going to find the derivative at x equals 3. So y is x squared. So we're going to do the limit as x goes to 3 of f of 3, oh, sorry, f of x minus f of 3 over x minus 3. So f of x is x squared. f of 3 is 9. And so we have x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Then we're going to do the limit as x goes to 3. If I plug 3 in directly, I get 9 minus 9 over 3 minus 3. So that's that indeterminate form. I have 0 over 0. If I would like to find my slope, then I need to do a little bit more work. I can do a little bit of factoring. I've got difference of two squares here. So I'm going to go ahead and factor. So I have the limit as x goes to 3 of x plus 3 times x minus 3. And now my x minus 3s can cancel because there's a hole, and now I can plug in 3, and so I get 6. So dy dx is equal to 6. That is new, uh, Leibniz notation. I could also say y prime of 3 is equal to 6. That is Newton's notation. So either notation is fine. I'm, I found that for the quadratic graph at x equals 3, my slope is 6. If you can imagine the quadratic graph, it looks like this. And when you're at x equals 3, it's pretty steep. So it makes sense that we would be at a slope of 6. Um, this one, we're going to write the equation for a tangent line uh, of y equals 1 over x. So we're going to do the limit 
as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h, so that would be 1 over 4 plus h minus 1 over 4 over h. So I'm using this 1 over x function. I plugged in 4 plus h, and I plugged in 4. Now I see that I have fractions, so I'm going to find a common denominator. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 over 4 times 4 plus h minus 4 plus h over 4 times 4 plus h. And all of that is over h. Now I'm going to subtract, so I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 4 minus 4 is going to subtract away, so I have negative h over 4 times 4 plus h. And then instead of writing all of that as kind of a triple-decker fraction, I'm going to write times 1 over h. I'm dividing by h, so that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Now my h's cancel, and now I can plug in 0 without breaking math, so I get negative 1 over 16. Remember, this is the slope of my tangent line, so this is going to be the slope. The x-coordinate that we're looking at is x equals 4. To write the equation for a tangent line, I always need three things. I need an x-coordinate, I need a y-coordinate, and I need a slope. So I have an x-coordinate of 4, a slope of negative 1 16th, and then my y-coordinate is going to be 1 over 4 because I plug that into the function. Now if I want to write the equation for the line, it would be y equals negative 1 16th x minus 4 plus 1 fourth. And that would be the equation for the tangent line. You can certainly distribute the negative 1 16th through the parentheses if you want to. And you can add like terms if you want to. But you don't have to. You're done at this point. You have an equation for the tangent line. All right, so to summarize, we have two different ways of finding the, the slope of the tangent line. We can use this formula or we can use this formula. Both of those two formulas give us the slope. And if we want to write an equation for a tangent line, we always need three things. We need the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and the slope. All right, hope this helps. Bye.